All right. Hey guys, well, as I mentioned, uh, recently, <clears throat> I think in vlog 13, I have received an uh, MXR um, isolated power brick in the mail that I'm going to be replacing on this uh, homemade pedal board. Well, hello, Lily. <laughs> a homemade pedal board that I made a few years ago out of a crate <clears throat> salvaged from, uh, well, I say salvaged, that I took off of an, eight, uh, an air conditioning handler, an air handler that I helped my dad install a few years ago and uh, used a piece of wood that had uh, been knocked down from a storm in my yard at the time and made legs for it to give it that slant there. I have a miter saw and uh, went and bought a bunch of Velcro tape and some staples to hold it onto the wood and uh, just had a lot of fun for a while making this and I apologize for my dog that's in the way. Let me pause right there. She's wanting on the bed. Okay, and we're back. And so, and then I, I had originally, I'll show you in a second, but I have it flipped over this way first because my apartment I'm living in currently is carpeted in most of the spaces that I have that I can work on this thing. So when I flip it over, the Velcro picks up, you know, dog and cat hair and little blades of grass that are in the carpet that we don't notice until something like this happens or until we vacuum. So let me, uh, let me flip it over and show you what's underneath. Okay, and now, as you can see, my cat, Ashton, is sniffing around. She likes this thing. I think she, I think she and the dog can still smell the previous home I lived in. Uh, some of the smells, familiar smells on it. And for her, that was the house that she first remembers living in. Um, got her when she was a kitten. So it's probably, I think it, it intrigues her even more. And then on top of that, it's been in storage for a little while, so maybe some insects or whatever have crawled on it too. So she's very curious here. But anyway, um, so let me get down here and kind of point out a few things real quick. <clears throat> All right, watch out, Ashton. All right, watch out. So here I have a Voodoo Lab um, isolated power uh, source here and uh, sorry all right um, okay you two are gonna have to get out of the room okay let's try again now that Lily's out of the room Lily loves attention and she's obsessed with me um, okay anyways back to what I was saying so here here we have a voodoo lab uh, I think it's like an iOS 5 this is whatever they call their 5 it's covered up right now. I'm not taking that one off. That one's staying. Um, so that was the first one I had when I made this. And then my my uh, pedal collection grew and there was enough room on this board, well this, you know, do-it-yourself board, that I needed more. So I added this and this is what we're going to be replacing. Um, and then right here I have just a monster uh, what do you call it, surge protector or a power distributor, I don't remember. Um, but that's what I have here, power strip, uh, Monster brand. I'm sure there's some better ones, but this is just what I had handy. In fact, I just put this one, it's a smaller one on here. I originally had a white one that was a little bit bigger and even had USB ports. But I accidentally stepped on the uh, the prong, uh, this uh, the ground prong here when we were moving on the white one so just I went ahead and switched I didn't need all the big the bigger size anyway and it stood out more I had the smaller one here in the house uh, apartment so I replaced that but anyway um <clears throat> we're gonna be replacing this one this has great reviews I don't think it's a problem but what I was having in our <laughs> there's Ashton again what I was having in the previous house issues with um, the previous house I lived in has a, the, the old two wire system electrical system in it it's not properly grounded and it was built in 1959 and most of the electrical work in it is the original wiring and so I was always getting noise and every time I tried to use my pedal board and I'm you know still learning stuff so that may have not been the only issue but whatever issues other issues there may be it amplified them because of that and like little things would happen like when it would rain and storm in that house I would get extra feedback in electrical equipment it wasn't just my pedal board though 
it also happened in the recording. So in, on basal keystones and the album I put out before it, Beginning Kernels, this was an issue that would arise when I was recording in that house because the drums and some instruments were recorded at my friend Jay Cortez's uh, studio, uh, Elevated Studios in Steve Mill. But then um, he got really busy with his life and things, just circumstances changed where we weren't able to finish the albums, uh, which was really going to be one album together. So I had to finish everything in my own home and, and before I knew it I was isolated and doing everything by myself. So there were issues with the electrical that would arise in the recordings. Well, just to be safe, because I'm getting ready to go into a studio, I'm not going to say the name of it yet, or the dates yet, I'm not ready to announce that yet, but I am going into a professional studio and I would like to be able to take this and my pedals. So what I'm going to be doing today is uh, replacing this Donner uh, power supply because I'm just not real confident in its ability to isolate the power. And I'm not an expert on it. I, I could be wrong. I'm just going by my gut. So if you're interested in getting the Donner power supply, this is not a slam on them in any way. You know, find other people who know more about this stuff on YouTube and, you know, watch some of their videos and get the reviews. But what I did get is an MXR uh, isolated power brick to replace this one because it does have uh, better reviews and uh, it's still affordable in my opinion. And uh, it'll be just enough for what I need, I think. So I'm going to go ahead and unscrew this. This, but before I do real quick, this is perforated uh, strap. <clears throat> a lot. It's very commonly used in plumbing. But when I uh, used to work for my dad doing HVAC install uh, and repair work, we would use it a lot of times uh, when we would put our drains in. You know, it, would, it clings to that uh, PVC a little bit better. So we would have to run drains off the units. So we would always have this. So this is a little bit extra that we had off of jobs and I just brought it home. And I like using it, it's metal. And then I wrapped it in electrical tape because I didn't want direct rubbing from that onto here. And I think some of them actually, there's some insulation or something. And then there's also, um, also the electrical. In this case, I can see that I also put a nylon strap underneath. So that's, that's gonna be coming up in a minute. But anyway, I did put some insulation between the metal and the box that's in. Not that I don't know for sure that it would be an issue, but just in case. So let me grab uh, my quarter-inch uh, nut driver. Okay, so now I'm going to lift this up. It should lift right up. Oh, that's right. I forgot. I wrapped this with the... Uh, so I'm going to pop it up. Ashton, no. Don't bite that. That will hurt you. Okay, you gotta go. Okay, so I took the Ashton out. We're back, and uh, I even brought one ahead and I had forgotten my MXR brick. It's still unpackaged. But anyway, let me get this out and show you what the Donner looks like. Okay, so I'll bring it up a little closer here. Now my lighting's pointed down there, so it won't be as well lit as uh, as the um, board down there. Because I have all my lights pointed at it. But you can see it. It's They did a good job. And so I think if you're on a budget and this is what's it within your budget, I mean, give it a try. Again, I don't have proof that this was causing issues. I'm just going off a of gut that it would be, in my opinion, it's not even that. It, it's better said that I just, on my gut instinct, I think the MXR brick will perform better. So I'm updating this. I won't throw this away, though. Now another issue was in our in the move. I don't know where I put the power, the, the plug for the power, and I don't know if it's worth the time searching for it because it may be in my storage unit. Um, okay. So and I don't know if I'm in a video. I may video. I don't know, but I'm gonna at least show you what will be going on here. And so here's, you know, brand new MXR um, isolated power brick. Should be brand new. Okay. Got a little bit of a packaging thing here. Got the quick guide here. And go through. Yeah. All that. I might look at that later. Got my limited warranty. Looks like you've got your little uh, the plastic for um. Yeah, you can't. It's not. It. Anyway, there's the plastic. You got your little rubber um, 
feet, if you will. Limited warranty, and uh, probably a little. <coughs> Sorry, still got a little bit of allergies left over from last week. Still got some drainage. And there we go. Yeah, so we got a little bit of quick reference guide there for the brick. So let's go ahead and get that out. Wow. So, good news is I was a little nervous when this box came in. I was like, that is a large box. And I was worried that the brick was going to be this big. Good news is that it is not. And it looks like what we're looking for is going to be here. In this one. Okay. Oh, that's nice. Give us a little bit of padding here. That might come in handy on something else. Or I might use it between here. I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, alright. So now we have our MXR isolated brick. Or they call it ISO brick. But isolated power. And this has just as many as the Donner did. I mean, it did cost double, I think, of what the Donner cost me when I bought it versus what this costs now. But I think, I'm guessing, and I bet I'll be right, that the performance is at least double too, though, um, in quality. And again, nothing gets Donner. That's part of Donner's deals. They make things affordable. And so, um, and you even got a switch right here to adjust some power distribution there. I think, I haven't looked closely at this. I'm guessing it's going to be for one of maybe uh, this one, but we'll see. I'm, you know, I'm, I can't quite read the screen I'm recording with, but I'm guessing this does that. But I could be wrong. It could maybe it does more. In fact, there's one here too. So anyway, that's going to be going here, and that looks like that's going to fit real well. Now, before I install it, I will go ahead and glance through instructions and stuff. So I'm going to stop the recording here for a while. And uh, I may come back once uh, either I have installed or maybe if I think I want to show you. I don't know if I want to show you me installing it. Maybe I'll record it. We'll see. But I'm going to pause real, right here. Okay. I'm going to take a quick intermission and show you something neat. So um, I live in the Dallas-Fort Worth metropolitan area. And uh, I grew up, I think I've mentioned in previous vlogs, in a... Uh, a more rural city. I mean, it felt like a town. It technically, according to uh, um, Texas's definitions of cities, it is a city. But it's a uh, steam mill, and they call themselves the cowboy cap of the world. When I when I was real young, it was still a very, uh, very big farm town, um, and it still does have a lot of dairy. Um, but a lot of the independently owned dairies were bought out, sadly. Um, especially in the 90s and a lot of those families that I grew up with moved on to other states and to, to, to either do different things with their lives or start dairies in other states where they weren't being bought up yet. But anyway, um, it's a very different place. So, But that was about an hour and 15 minutes from Fort Worth and, and you know, a little, a little bit, uh, about an hour and 20 minutes to Waco. Um, so I grew up frequent, frequently, uh, frequenting <laughs> Fort Worth, and it still feels like home. It always has, and to me, if I'm going to claim a city that as a hometown, it would be Fort Worth. Um, secondly, uh, Waco. Waco also feels like home because, um, you know, Steve was part of the 254 area code, and um, the landscape and terrain and, 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 uh, is very similar uh, in Steve Mill as it is to the Waco area. So traveling all the way to Waco always felt uh, also uh, very homely. So... But Fort Worth, I frequented more, um, and and today, even today, I go to that city more than any of the other cities. I I now live uh, closer to Dallas in the DFW area. I don't live in Dallas, but I live very close to Dallas. And um, so now I'm starting to venture into Dallas more, but I still technically uh, have more connections in Fort Worth, and go there more often. So. Anyway, I mentioned all that just to say there's a really good, there's a couple of really great breweries in Fort Worth. Well, actually, more than a couple, but two that I really love. Um, they have some other ones that are good. It's not that they're bad, but these are the two I prefer. Well, um, my favorite brewery is called Panther Island Brewing, and uh, let's see if you might. I don't know if you got the, 
you can kind of see the logo here. It's you know, it's a glass, but Panther Island, Island Brewing. That's my favorite one. And uh, so I've got a treat here for you though. But tonight, um, I'm gonna set this down here. Right now is the season for uh, Barton House's Barton House Brewing um, Company in Fort Worth. They're a little bit bigger than Panther Island, and so they're my second favorite brewery, and they have a lot more options than Panther Island does, because Panther Island's a little smaller. And they have a lot of good things, and this is the season for cookies. Actually, I did that backwards. Let me do that again. So this is the season for cookies. <laughs> Let's see if you can see that. Sorry. I'm an amateur still at YouTube. Cookies. And cream. I'm going to be mixing these. I've had them separately. The cream was a little too much for me. It tastes like a cream soda. The cookie dough stout here, which is what this one is, that's up my alley. I like that a lot. It's got a, very, a lot of chocolatiness to it. So what I'm going to be doing here is, uh, I guess, be doing a beer tasting in the middle of this, what was a pedal, uh, a pedal, not a review, but I was showing you my pedal board, uh, one I built myself. And oh, while I'm opening these, quick note, you know, a little tap, uh, a little tip if uh, you're wanting to build your own pedal board. You know, after buying the power supplies, you know, the surge protector, the other one I had on it, and screws, staples, and I think I just said Velcro tape, all the other, the things would actually need to go on the pedal board. This still ended up costing me as much as I think you could get like a temple um, audio board, a temple board for, which I recommend those. That's, I was tempted to just buy one, but I, I decided I'm going to go ahead and use this one I made. But, um, now they do have accessories, so it may, it may be cheaper to build your own still, because you still have to buy the accessories to the other boards, like... You know, most other boards, the ones that you get pre-made, you still have to get Velcro tape and all that. So and maybe it's about the same, but it wasn't any cheaper for me in the end because I had to buy all the screws and all this extra staples to hold the Velcro tape down. But just consider those things. I mean, if you want to build one, do it. It's fun, but it may not be cheaper. All right, so let's go ahead and try this. So we got our cookies and our cream. And I'll show you the cans when they get a little emptier. Oh... Pouring them in there. Stop there. Let's see. Hmm. All right. So let's see what this tastes like. Mixed them in. The foam's good. It right now to me, I'm not getting a distinct flavor from the foam. A little bit of the chocolate, I guess, set settled in as after I said that. Okay, I can appreciate the cream one a little more. I'm more of a stout person, so I like the more intense flavors. Um, stouts, I like stouts, I like sours. Um, I like L's, amber L's. I don't tend to, you know, enjoy, you know, blonde lagers or, or pilsners. I, I don't tend to enjoy them, and I definitely do not like uh, Indian pale L's. I don't like IPAs. They gross me out. <laughs> And so I'm, I'm not cool right now because IPAs are the big thing. And I, I don't actually like uh, the, the milk stouts, believe it or not. Um, some of them taste okay, but it's that whole lactose or milk aspect I don't like in the beer. Um, I do love milk, but I think in the beer. But this is pretty good, so. I think I still prefer the cookie dough stout by itself, though, for my own taste. But I can see this is a really cool idea fun thing to do to mix the two and um, I could do without the cream myself but I could see where other people would really like it and it does have a you know um, cookie a cookies and cream flavor to it that's pretty cool okay, I'm gonna pause there I'm gonna drink this and then I'll show you all the cans when they get empty okay so real quick um, try to get the can art in in here real quick I haven't drank all of this one yet, I, I, uh, but this is the uh, cookies. See there, by Martin House Brewing. Really creative guys. We got some really rad uh, brews, and they do a lot of fun seasonal one. 
Um, if you live in Texas and you're able to get it, you know, keep your eyes out for the Bananas Fosters that's going to be coming out soon, or should come out soon, if it hasn't already. Um, amazing, that beer. And it's a hot seller. But here's the cookies can, so there's that one. And I saved a little bit in that can because that's the one I like. This one's a little too sweet for me by itself, so I... I didn't. I wanted to save some of the cookie dough stout by itself for my own sake, and so I I mixed a little bit of the cookie dough in with the rest of this, so I could actually drink this and not just throw it out. Because again, it's a little too sweet for me by itself. Some people will love that though. Some people will love it because it's like a cream soda. This particular one. So you got the cookies and cream. Very clever and very, it was fun to mix them, but you can also drink them separately, you know? Here we go. All right, back to the pedal board. Oh, sorry, one other thing. So, you know, when I put the, uh, like the cream one, I don't know if you could tell when I was pouring it, it's clear like a cream soda. And then the, the cookie dough stout, I'll show you later. It's, you know, pretty dark, but then when you mix them together, it almost comes out like an amber L. It's still a little brown, but anyway, I'll try to get some of the stout in a little bit. Okay, so I think I will go ahead and uh, attempt to install this uh, on camera. Oh, I forgot. I will have to install, go ahead and put plug in this first because they lay it out right there so I'm gonna have to calculate for that so that might be one complaint if I had one so far but you know it's probably not. oh wow cool I don't know if you saw that but they have the different uh, plugins here in case you live in other countries they should go ahead and include them or if you are big enough or have the support to go and perform overseas this might be necessary I, if that happens for Beacon Understanding anytime soon, I may need someone else in the band who knows what they're doing to make sure my board's ready. Um, I spend most of my mental energy thinking about songwriting. That's what I spend most of my time with and coming up with song ideas. That's what I love and expressing my thoughts in that. So it's nice for me to have uh, other musicians with me who think about the other more basic things, you know, uh, like, you know, pedal power and stuff like that. Um, okay, so that's going to go there. And then I'm going to go ahead and uh, consider that. Anyway, and same thing, like, I'm, I'm not musically educated, and I've talked about this, uh, I believe, in some other vlogs. I'm self-taught. Um, I, ha I did learn some ideas and some about music when I first started performing. And when I first started performing, I performed uh, in a uh, church mu uh, church band. So we would play, uh, you know, praise and worship music, and that was a fantastic experience. Um, and I am so glad I had that. And you know that was a very important season for me in my life to uh, because that was when I found my true faith which I won't go into detail here I'm not ashamed of it but this you know Beacon Understanding is not a Christian band um, it's just a band and although you know my individual faith definitely inspires you know or influences my perspectives and the songs I don't we're not a Christian band I don't write songs thinking that I'm gonna save people or any weird thing like you know, religious people tend to think, I just want to inspire and encourage people to be more spiritual. I don't care what they believe. And I uh, hope that they go and find the living God that uh, I testify of. And if they don't, you know, I hope that they find the holier self within them. I mean, you know, that's my, my aim as a person. Um, now, if those who do testify of Christ, I do, will gladly speak to them about my understanding of Christ. But... Um, anyway, all that being said, I got my start playing in churches, um, <clears throat> uh, and so I did learn a little bit because the main guy who ended up, when I first started playing, it wasn't, and an, it was another self-taught guy, and it was, and he was my best friend for years, um, and then he left, and 
quit talking to me, you know, but that's not the, the point of what I'm talking about, but that did happen. And uh, it wasn't just his fault. You know, part of it was I distanced myself because I could tell he was going to leave and I was just, it, my faith was really important to me at the time. So it wasn't entirely his fault or anything. Didn't mean to sound like that, but lost that friend at that time, sadly. And uh, anyway, so who, the guy who replaced him was playing drums for, with him for a while. Well, the guy who ended up replacing him uh, is a jazz musician, so he is musically educated. So I learned a little bit of stuff from him about, you know, like things like circle of fifths, very basic things. And in you know, Nashville, uh, man, it's cracking. I hope it'll stay. Uh, Nashville um, number system, which I'm not an expert in. I don't I, I, because I haven't had that experience yet to going out and just playing gigs like that, like they do. But the numbering system, that kind of stuff, influenced my thinking. So, and then from there, I was able to start picking up on, you know, even though I don't technically have uh, key signatures memorized, I'm very familiar with key signatures from. The number system and playing you know looking at chord charts and stuff all those years so i am uh uneducated musically yet at the same time i soaked in as much as i could from uh the people and still do who are musically educated so um you know i like to have people in my band who are musically educated um since i'm not to make up for my lack that's what i love about life you know we all have our strong points we all have our shortcomings and uh but if we work together we can do these fantastic things so on that note as i'm plugging this in and getting this a little bit ready no nope, that's not going to work that way so this will have to actually no it's not going to work that way i'm gonna have to rethink this anyway i'm gonna you know on that note uh anyway as i was saying i like to surround people uh, who can make up for my lack with the music and the same thing with like the electronic aspects or the mixing of it. You know, I really need people in my life who know more about that stuff. I, because all my brain power goes to the songwriting. I don't. For me to sit down and learn about that stuff, it it feels like I'm <clears throat> preventing my own progress and making more uh, content to share with the world. And that's what I feel like I need to be doing. So I need to. You know, I like to have people like that. So. Like, for instance, I've been recording demos, so I can go in the studio, uh, finally, if you make the first studio album for Beacon and Understanding, which, sadly, I'm the only uh, band member that's going to be going in for that. Uh, even my guitar player said not to count on him. I, I do hope he's able to make it. He said if he can, he will. But Beacon and Understanding is not a priority in his life, so he likely won't be, uh, you know, I don't know, that, I'm going to have to move that, so we're going to have to change that. Anyway, um, that's something I, I will basically be making this one. Now, my drummer, uh, Tim, he's got his other band that they're currently working on an album on, and he just had twin babies with his wife. Not him, not he himself, but with his wife. And so he hasn't been returning my messages. Uh, and I'll get sporadic messages from him, but he didn't return mine. So, And, and same thing with phone call, just communication has been so bad. I'm going into the studio to record with a professional drummer who's also a producer. So just for efficiency's sake, we'll be I'll be uh, using him as my drummer on this album. So I'll be doing all that stuff on my own, but I really need people. Um, man, B. Kim Shane really needs people who can help and who have knowledge and experience with the things I don't have experience in. Because right now, in a way, I'm kind of drowning. I don't have any help. I'm literally doing everything myself. And I don't have bandmates. Um, the church, you know, I mentioned earlier that I got started with musically is uh, I left that place because I realized it had devolved into a cult. And so, wait, I was going to move that one. Yeah, that's what I was going to do. And so I had to leave that place. And uh, anyway, so, uh, and I don't think, I don't know, you know, it's hard to say. I keep thinking about this stuff a lot, but. In the beginning, everything seemed so sincere, and all the people that I was connected with, we all seemed to be genuine in the things we shared and did. I don't think it started off as a cult. I really don't think that. I think what happened is that it devolved into a cult, and it had to do with the leader, as it usually does, not wanting to give up control. And, uh, I mean, it's, it's gotten bizarre. 
you know, you have adults, full of grown adults, people all the way up into their 50s, who he's convinced need to submit their entire lives to him, you know. That's just strange. It is absolutely strange. And so, when, you know, when I left, I lost all those friends, and that's why I brought that up. So my original drummer actually is at that, that cult, and now he won't even speak to me. He used to help me run sound. He used to help me set up equipment. <clears throat> he did a lot for me when I when we first would go play gigs together. And now he's gone and has nothing doesn't want anything to do with music unless the cult asks him to play in their church. Or their yeah, their their services. And just bizarre stuff like that, you know. And so, uh that being said, you know, if you live in the Dallas Fort Worth area and uh check out Beacon Understanding Stuff if you're a musician. And if you <laughs> Uh, are wanting to be part of a band, reach out to me. My email address you can reach me at is doc, D-O-C, B-K, uh, initials B like boy and K like king, and then uh, music, word music in English, and then management, abbreviated as MGMT, so the, the it's <clears throat> D-O-C, B-K, M-U-S-I-C, mgmt at gmail.com <clears throat> and I'll post it in here. So dot bk music management at gmail.com. So you know reach out to me and uh, see if we can get some. I need people. I need people who can help and not just <clears throat> not just be nice and say yeah yeah I'll I'll be there because in the end I'm not a priority and neither is the band to them. So I need people who, you know, who want to do this thing, you know, so if you, that's, if you think you might be interested, I will preface, um, you know, I uh, don't really need amateurs right now, to be honest, not to be rude, need people with a little experience, and uh, especially if you can help uh, with booking gigs, um, that is a uh, thing I struggle with, because I live in Texas, I don't play Texas music, I don't play country music, I don't play, I don't even do Americana music, <clears throat> I do alternative music, rock music, and sometimes folk, so some of that might swing into Americana, but those aren't my main genres. So, <clears throat> if you've got connections, uh, definitely reach out to me, um, because right now I'm doing everything myself. And uh, it feels like that's kind of a trap. I don't want to be in that trap. So, Alright, so we now have this moved, so it looks like it's only pretty sturdy. <coughs> I'm going to have to stop recording for tonight because I'm starting to lose my voice again. But that'll fit there now. This will go here. <clears throat>